So let's take a look at the fundamental, fundamental counting principle when there's dependent events. A good example for this is uh, a horse race. Um, and a question that might be asked is how many ways can six horses finish in a horse race? Well, the first thing that we should do when using the fundamental counting principle is ask the question, how many events are involved? The second thing we should do is ask, how many outcomes are there for each event? If we can do that, then we can go ahead and use the fundamental counting principle to figure out the total number of outcomes for the race. Let's take a look at event one. In event one, a, ho a horse finishes. So there's six horses and one horse finishes first. How many ways could that happen? Why don't you pause the video for a moment and think about it. And in a second uh, we'll see if we agree. I believe that there are six possible ways that a horse could finish first in this race. Um, there are six horses and any one of them could finish first so for that reason there's six possible outcomes for a horse finishing first. Um, there's other events. Let's take a look and see what the next one is. Oh, uh, by the way, since there's six ways that a horse could finish, event one has six possible outcomes. What about event two? Um, there's a, a horse could finish second. Again, you have to ask yourself the question, how many ways could that happen? And again, I'll pause, uh, I'd like you to pause for a moment, pause the video, and think for yourself, see if you can figure out how many possible outcomes for event two. I believe that there is five possible outcomes um, because after the first horse finishes um, there's only five horses that are left and so for that reason event two only has five possible outcomes now is there any more events left uh, before we figure out the total number of ways the the total number of ways that six horses can finish yes there are more let's take a look at one more um, five outcomes for event two Event three is that a horse finishes third. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> I would ask the question, how many possible ways could a horse finish third? And uh, hopefully you're with me on this one. I believe that there are four ways that a horse could finish third. Two horses um, already finished, and, uh, and therefore, since there's six total horses, there must be four possible ways a horse could finish in third place. Now, if we go back to the fundamental counting principle, the rule was uh, that if you know uh, how many outcomes there are for each event, you can just multiply those outcomes together to get the total number of ways that all the events could occur in a sequence. So, let's go ahead and use the fundamental counting principle and actually calculate the no total number of possible outcomes. Now, Remember, with the fundamental counting principle, we need to know how many events and how many outcomes. Um, and what we do is we say, well, the number of ways that a horse could finish first is six. And uh, then we multiply that times the number of ways that uh, event two could occur, a horse finishes second. Multiply that times the number of ways that event three could occur, four four ways. Num multiply that times the number of ways that a horse could finish fourth and the number of ways a horse could finish fifth, and then there's only one way that a horse could finish in sixth place. Now, if you multiplied those all out, we would get the total number of ways. We'd get exactly what we're looking for. We would get the number of ways that six horses could finish in a horse race, and that's what we were looking for. Now, I'm not going to multiply it out for you, but I am going to bring up another topic. Um, some of you, if, if we look at situations like this with more numbers, um, it gets a bit laborious to continue to write out all the numbers. So somebody came up with some a fancy notation and it goes like this. Um, this is equal to um, something called six exclamation point and that exclamation point has a fancy name. The exclamation point is known as factorial and whenever we see a factorial next to a number, uh, 
uh, what we get is that number times one number less times one number less times one number less all the way till we get to the number one. Now there's a couple of rules for factorial. Um, the number next to factorial must be an integer. It cannot, it cannot be a decimal. It cannot be a fraction. Um, and, uh, and you will always multiply one less times one less times one less all the way down to the number one. There's also a special case for factorials, and we may run into this uh, in another video. And the special case looks like this. Uh, it, it might be obvious to you, hopefully it is, what 3 factorial is and what 8 factorial is. And uh, in fact, uh, um, heck, it uh, <clears throat> might not be a horrible idea to try this right now. Make sure that you get it. Pause the video for a second. This should have turned out to be 6. Um, I'm not going to do the math on the 6 factorial or the 8 factorial. I'll leave that for you. Um, but why is this 6? Because it's 3 times 2 times 1. Anyways, um, this is one that you might not be able to guess. It's 0 factorial. It's going to come up in a future lesson or video. And it turns out that 0 factorial, strangely, is 1. And there are some good reasons for that. I'm not going to explain it right now. You've been patient. You've been listening for a long time. You've been watching this video, these videos for a long time. Um, uh, maybe in class I'll go through an explanation of that. Now I'd like you to try one. And I'm hoping that you'll find this to be a fun and practical example. Something that, who knows, you might actually need to use in everyday life. Um, so we're going to look at, uh, here's the question, or here's the situation. Um, in the state lottery, there are 56 numbered balls in a cage. Each of the balls has one number on it from 1 to 56. The question I have from you, for you is, is how many ways could you pull five balls from the cage? And this is going to lead us to, this will give us the ability to calculate the probability of winning the lottery. So this is kind of an interesting calculation here. Now I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure it out based on the horse race example. And if not, I'm going to lead you through uh, with, I'll give you some hints and see if you can at some point pick it up and run with it. So pause the video. Okay, for those of you who want the spoiler, um, well first of all a hint. Um, how ma you have to first ask yourself how many events are here. And uh, why don't you pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure it out. I believe that there are five events here um, because pulling uh, one, each time you pull a ball from the cage, uh, that's one single event. Another question you have to ask yourself is how many outcomes are there for each event? Again, pause the video and see if you can figure that out or at least maybe get a partial answer. All right, if you want the spoiler, um, well, let's take a look. Uh, how about this? Let's take a look at event one. In event one, you draw one ball. We'll call it, we'll say draw the first ball. How many possible ways could you draw one ball? The correct answer is 56. There's 56 balls in there, so that's how many outcomes there could be for event one. See if you can figure out what event 2 is and how many outcomes there are for event 2. Go ahead and pause the video for a moment. Okay, if you want the spoiler, here we go. Event 2 is to draw the second ball and how many outcomes? Well, if we already drew one ball from the cage, um, then there's only 55 left. So for that reason, event two must have 55 possible outcomes. So um, I'm hoping that from this point you could go and use the fundamental counting principle in order to calculate the total number of possible outcomes. If you'd like to give it a try, pause the video. Otherwise, I'm going to show you. So Let's take a look and see what's necessary. Um, let's see, the first event, the number of ways that the first event could occur is 56 ways. 
the number of ways the second event could occur is 55 ways and then 54 53 and 52 now some of you might be tempted to use that new factorial notation that we talked about earlier um, it doesn't work here because we're not multiplying all the way down to one <clears throat> You could, however, multiply these numbers out on your calculator and get a number. And what you'll see is, is there's many, many, many possible combinations of these 56 numbers. And that's why it's so, the odds are so low that you could win the lottery. Because if you're only buying one ticket with six numbers on it, and there's all these different ways to, that the numbers could be arranged, the odds that you guess the right combination are very low. So this is good info. Um, by the way, a little challenge for you. Um, although you cannot write this in factorial notation, um, I'm wondering, it, 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 at least you can't write it as a single factorial, I'm, writing if, I'm wondering if you might be able to figure out a way to write uh, uh, a, a combination of factorials together to represent this here. Um, if not, you're going to see it at some point, but I just wanted to put a little extra challenge out to you.